Hi, I'm Devin C. Larson, and on today's video, I want to talk about breath control for voiceover, specifically how to use your diaphragm to support your voice with a consistent air pressure. First, though, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. Now, you might not have thought about it this way, but your voice is a wind instrument, and like with any good wind instrument, you need to supply it with a steady stream of air for it to function properly. And chances are no one ever taught you how to breathe the right way, you just started breathing when you were born. But there's more than one way. There's shallow breathing, where you're just breathing primarily with your chest and only filling up the topmost portion of your lungs. And then there's deep breathing, where you're filling up your entire lungs and then expelling the air from your lungs using your abdominal muscles and specifically your diaphragm to push it out with a consistent air pressure. And what that does for your voice vis-a-vis -vis voiceover is it makes sure that you have a consistent volume as you're speaking. So even as you're coming to the end of a breath, you're not suddenly dropping in volume or your voice gets thinner. It also allows you to sustain your phrasing for longer periods of time because you don't need to breathe as often. And so fewer breaths make it onto the recording, although some is okay. And then if you ever need to get loud or project your voice for any reason, for voiceover, but also for singing or announcing, uh, you can actually do some damage to your vocal cords if you're trying to force air through them. If you're breathing from your diaphragm, you're able to project your voice without having to put that pressure on your vocal cords. It's, it's better for the health of your vocal cords. And so there are a couple of ways to become aware of where your diaphragm is and sort of build in the muscle memory of how to breathe the right way, and I'm going to discuss them a bit now. So the first exercise, we're just going to try and gain an awareness of where our diaphragm even is and what it feels like in action. And a good way to do this is to take a couple fingers, place them under your rib cage, stick your tongue out, and then start to pant like a dog. <laughs> You'll notice that when you do that, your chest isn't really rising and falling, all the action's in your abdomen. And that's because the force of air coming out of your lungs, that's all being controlled by your diaphragm. So if you've got those two fingers placed under your rib cage and pressing in lightly, you're going to feel your diaphragm move up and down. Get familiar with that feeling because that's what you're going to want to start doing when you're forcing the air out of your lungs. You're going to constrict your diaphragm and push the air out with it. And now that we know where that is, let's go on to the next exercise that's going to teach us a little bit more about how to breathe in the correct way. For this next exercise, we're going to start to develop the muscle memory that allows us to breathe the correct way. And the goal is eventually you're not going to have to think about this consciously at all. It should just happen automatically. But first you've got to have that muscle awareness. So for this one, you're going to want to lay down flat on the ground spread your back out over the ground and place a medium heavy book on your chest and then take both hands, place them on either side of your rib cage. And you're going to want to inhale for a count of 10 through your nose until you fill up your lungs entirely from the bottom up and then exhale again for a count of 10, this time through your mouth until you push out every last bit of air and there's just nothing left in there. Once you've done that and you release, your diaphragm should drop and your lungs will fill with air automatically. It might take a little bit of practice. And while you're doing this, you're going to want to expand your rib cage outward as you're taking the air in and push your, you're gonna to wanna to feel your hands moving outward, being pushed outward by your rib cage. And you don't want that book on your chest to really rise and fall that much because you're not really using your chest to breathe, all of the actions taking place with your abdominal muscles. So if you feel your rib cage expanding as you're taking in air slowly, and then you're exhaling all of that air by pushing in with your up with your abdominal muscles, tightening your abdominal muscles, there shouldn't really be anything going on with your chest. That book shouldn't really move too much. And you're going to want to start with a count of 10 in both inhaling, exhaling, increase that to 20, then to 30. Over time, your lung capacity is going to increase. That's going to allow you to speak for longer periods of time without having to take a breath. And it's going to just 
get you more aware of how breathing the correct way feels so it becomes an unconscious action on your part. You're not even going to have to think about it. This next exercise is basically a modification of the last one, but it's an important step up. And you're going to want to sit up straight and place your hands on either side of your rib cage, or better yet, if you have a second person, have them place their hands on the sides of your rib cage. And as you take in that breath through your nose for a count of 10, then 20, then 30, just keep upping the um, count, press outward on their hands or yours by expanding your rib cage and then expelling all the air out through your mouth by tightening your abdominal muscles. And like I said, it's basically the last one, except you're not uh, having the force of gravity with you lying flat on the ground. You're having to keep your back straight. The ground's not keeping your back straight. And you don't have that book on your chest so that you can feel whether or not it's moving. You have to start to develop that sort of awareness without the book. And just really focus on the side to side movement of your expanding rib cage and tightening those abdominal muscles. And that's going to be the main focus of this exercise. There's one other thing that I wanted to mention. Eventually, this is going to start to become second nature, and you're not going to have to think about the mechanics of how your rib cage is expanding or how your diaphragm is moving. And that's good. You're going to want to get to a point where you're taking in exactly enough air for whatever you need to say and then you say it and then you take another breath and then you keep talking as if you were talking to a friend you'll notice that when you're talking to a friend you're not ever just hyper focused on i've got to get to the end of the sentence of this phrase that i'm saying because otherwise if i breathe here it's going to sound unnatural but the sentence is incredibly long and why does it keep going and what am i going to do if i run out of air <gasps> you don't want that those catch breaths are ugly you just want to speak calmly, breathe, and then keep talking. And it's okay if some of that breath makes, makes it onto the recording, as long as it's not those ugly catch breaths. Nobody wants those. And the goal is to get your mind off of the mechanics of how you're breathing. You want to breathe the right way, but you don't want to have to think about it. You want to be able to focus eventually on how you're delivering the lines and that's where you want your mind to be at, not on this breathing mechanic stuff, but you gotta get the basics in first. Thanks again for watching my video. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and I can't wait to see you back here next time. Thanks again.